November 2003, Phoenix, Arizona. It was a routine traffic stop, a pickup truck with stolen plates. When police ran the IDs of the passengers, one of them hit, a woman named Mary Day. He said, Joe, guess what? Uh, Mary Day's been found, and I, I was stunned. Investigators had put Mary Day into a missing persons database long ago. She identified herself with a Phoenix identification card or Arizona state identification card. Back in California, Detective Joe Bertina felt like a ghost had just appeared. In his mind, Mary Day had been murdered more than 20 years earlier at the home of her parents. You talked to William and Charlotte in April of 2003. Yeah. And then seven months later or so, a woman named Mary Louise Day just falls out of the right. sky. I was stunned. His boss, Steve Sircone, could not believe it. Joe went down there and he met her and he sent a picture of her and we went, what? Wait a minute. No, all right, all right. It looked like it could be her and I said, I said, wait a minute, all, all these other bits of circumstantial evidence. The father almost the, confessing the, to almost something? Almost confessing to the murder of a, of a little girl. And now, here was this woman, 700 miles away, with a valid Arizona state ID. Strangely, that ID had been issued only three weeks earlier, while the homicide investigation was underway. Well, you must have found the timing awfully suspicious. Yes, it was very suspicious. When Detective Bertina went to Phoenix, the woman he was sure had been murdered told him she had run away from her mother, Charlotte, and stepfather, William, when she was a teenager. She'd basically lived under the radar and by her wits ever since. But she seemed hesitant, and her story seemed sketchy. Later, in a phone call, Mary told Bertina she had some awful memories. Did you want to talk about what happened that last night? It hurt. I'm sure it does, but what happened that last night? I'm so confused anymore, I don't know what's real or not. I remember you kept drowning my head into the tub and it Is that when you started bleeding? No, I was already bleeding and hit my head into the coffee table. I think I blacked out. Maybe that's why I can put all the pieces together to tell you but she didn't remember anything about the sick dog. Was that troublesome to you? That was, yeah. Investigators say it was hard to pin down much of anything about her past two decades. They began to wonder if the woman with the freshly minted ID was really who she claimed to be. You refused to call her Mary Louise Day. We called her Phoenix Mary. In phone conversations, Phoenix Mary was sounding increasingly frustrated. Can I throw one question at you, if you don't mind? Go ahead, Mary. If you would have found my body, how were you going to be able to prove who the hell I was? DNA. Oh, so since I'm still alive, y'all can't prove who I am? There's no record of you ever being anywhere. It's like you haven't existed up until now. I said, all right, let's get a DNA test on this woman. Let's let her prove that she's the uh, daughter of Charlotte. We're going to disprove that she's married, of course, because there's no way that her DNA is going to match. Except it did match. <laughs> I nearly fell on the floor. I couldn't believe it. The DNA came back positive to being a daughter. <laughs> of Charlotte. The case was closed. Sherry invited her long lost sister to move in with her. In most cases, that would be the end of the story, but not in this case. So now DNA matches, yep. case closed. Yeah, well, if it were that simple, right? Once Phoenix Mary moved in, Sherry started to have her own doubts. The First thing I noticed was she, it sounded like she had some weird Midwestern Southern accent. It's weird to me. 
The detectives had noticed that too. That's an interesting dialect you have, Mary. What do you mind? I don't know if I've ever quite heard that particular manner of speaking. Hey, y'all still trying to prove who I am, huh? Yes, ma'am, we are. Phoenix Mary also said she never used her real name. Say, nobody's known me as Mary. I gave that name up years ago. What name would they know you by? Monica Devereux. It's a name she said she made up. I did notice that she had magazines in the name of Monica Devereux. Sherry's sister, Kathy, was also unnerved. No, that's not Mary. Why? What makes you so sure? Something's off. You're telling me that your gut is saying it's not her. My gut. She says the woman claiming to be Mary didn't even remember that their birth father left them an inheritance they could collect at age 18. It was their shared escape plan, and they had a code word for it. Was there a, a code word or some sort of secret between you and Mary? Yeah, it was. It was called Mohawk. Mohawk was your secret word? Yep. And Mary did something else strange. She wrote a note to Detective Bertina. She emailed Joe, and her email said something to the effect of, I've been lying to you about who I am. And that was new information. Oh my God, I said, oh, this is a whole new ball game. Still, the case remained closed. But then in 2008, Steve Sircone, now Seaside's police chief, got a phone call from investigators at the Army base in Fort Ord. Another set of cadaver dogs had been working on an unrelated matter and had found something. Fort Ord was a huge place. And he said, look, we brought the cadaver dogs out here and they went over hundreds of homes. And he said, we got a hit on one of the homes. You'll never believe who was living in this house. He said, William Houle and his family lived in this house. 